Hi, everybody. This is Joe Joseph, and this is your DailySheeple.com daily news brief. Let's get started with some breaking news. <laughs> this just in, Hillary's off the hook. Hey, apparently she's just doing okay. There was no wrongdoing, according to FBI Director James Comey. This according to the DailyMail.com over in the U.K., uh, it says, breaking Hillary off the hook as FBI Director James Comey reveals the department will not change its July decision after further email investigation. So apparently, uh, some cronies of the Clintons have gotten to James Comey again. Uh, this according again to the Daily Mail. It says, the FBI has announced it will not make any changes to its July decision on Hillary Clinton's emails, meaning the Democratic nominee will not be charged. Congressman J Jason Chaffetz tweeted out the massive news on Sunday afternoon, saying, FBI director just informed us, based on our review, we have not changed our conclusions that we expressed in July with respect to Secretary Clinton. Speaking to reporters with Clinton in Cleveland, Ohio, Director of Communications Jennifer Palmieri confirmed the camp had seen Comey's letter. And uh, this is a quote directly from Ms. Palmieri. It says, we have seen Director Comey's latest letter to the Hill, <clears throat> and we are glad to see that he has found, as we were confident that he would, that he has confirmed the conclusion that he reached in July. And we're glad that this matter is resolved. Hmm. How convenient. The investigation, of course, was reopened on October 28th, sparked by a DailyMail.com story that revealed Anthony Weiner was sending ex uh, sexually explicit uh, messages to a 15-year-old girl. The email in question... The emails in question were found on Wiener's laptop. See, folks, you can't expect to get justice from a system that is so corrupt. And I know a lot of people out there have their hearts and their dreams set on Donald Trump. And that's all good. And maybe he'll come through. But again, I got to tell you, a very, 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 tall mountain he has to climb to get over the level of corruption that exists and to get over the amount of criminality that exists not just within the bureaucracies of government but also at the municipal levels as well because all of those people are bought and paid for this election should be a catalyst for some sort of change, whether it, I, I would hope we'd see massive nonviolent protests. I don't know if we will. I am just, I'm taken aback by the level of apathy that's out there, especially on the heels of this type of uh, news and information. This is unbelievable. And even so, new emails imply according to the Daily Caller, that top Clinton aide suggested that Hillary use a private server and didn't want her to run. Isn't that interesting? According to Derek Hunter, it says in an email exchange released Sunday by WikiLeaks, Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, implied her lawyer and longtime friend Cheryl Mills came up with the idea of Clinton using a private email server while Secretary of State. And when campaign advisor Neera Tandon asked, do we actually know who told Hillary she should use a private email? And has that person been drawn and quartered? Podesta replied, don't you think, Cheryl? Hmm? So that's pretty much interesting. Also, Mills was questioned by the FBI in connection to this email investigation and in an unusual step was allowed to be present during Clinton's interview as counsel. Now to Podesta's uh, suggestion, it was Mills. Uh, Tandon responded, I repeat, why hasn't this person been drawn and quartered? I'm reading Wolf Hall. There's something to be said for the power of torture. That's interesting. The Daily Caller previously reported Tandon's response, but the most recent WikiLeaks release now shows Podesta's subsequent response. At least we know now why Cheryl didn't want her to run. More revelation that you're not going to get justice from channels that are supposed to have your best interest at heart and that you pay for to provide a service to the people that has clearly failed 
It clearly failed. So much so that even Hillary's niece is voting Trump. This according to our own DailySheeple.com. She wants to be the first woman president for selfish reasons. Duh. Of course she does. Hillary Clinton, it says, can't even convince her own family members to vote for her. The only daughter of Bill Clinton's a druggy brother explains explained to Radar Online that she'll be voting for Donald Trump instead of her selfish aunt. That's right. Macy Smith, a hairstylist from Tampa, Florida, said, I support Donald Trump 100%. I've been a Democrat my whole life, but Trump is what we, re- what we really need right now. Someone who's going to stand up for us. I think at this point, Hillary just wants it to be in the history books, to be the first woman president for selfish reasons. Now, Macy's husband, Derek Smith, is a meteorologist with the U.S. Air Force and is currently on active duty in Kuwait, where he assists with air operations into and out of Iraq. Macy's mother, Martha Spivey, agreed with her daughter about Hillary Clinton's selfish nature. In an er interview with Radar, she said, quote, The Clintons are all talk. Hillary says she's all about family. But she's got a niece she's never met and never acknowledged. The Clintons have never helped us out. Macy explained that in the interview that her estranged father, Roger Clinton, makes a lot of promises that he never keeps. Hmm. That sounds kind of familiar now, doesn't it? And it's interesting, too, because, you know, now this gives the Clinton campaign a lot of ammunition, I guess you could say to go out and get all the sheeple that are asleeple and um, tell them things like uh, that if Whopper emails come out in the next two days, it's probably a fake. And there'll be a lot of people now that give that credibility simply because of what Director Comey has done, which is an absolute travesty and an outrage considering the amount of material That's now been posted and verified as authentic. Don't let the facts get in the way of a good good story, folks. According to Oliver Darcy of BusinessInsider.com, says a spokesman for Hillary Clinton claimed uh, Sunday that if WikiLeaks were to publish a bombshell email in the final two days of the election, why, it wouldn't be authentic. Quote, friends, Please remember that if you see a whopper of a WikiLeaks in the next two days, it's probably fake. This according to, again, Jennifer Palmieri, the communications director for the Clinton campaign. And of course, for the past several weeks, WikiLeaks has published emails obtained from a hacked, uh, hack on campaign chairman John Podesta's personal account. Many messages published have included exchanges that have caused headaches for the Clinton campaign. Now, The Clinton campaign has repeatedly declined to say whether any of those emails are authentic. Why? Because they wouldn't want to be caught lying, now would they? Because I would think that they've lied enough, but representatives from the Clinton campaign have instead only said that emails were likely the result of Russia trying to hack to interfere with the election. Yeah, because Vladimir Putin really gives a crap about Hillary Clinton. I doubt it. I doubt it. The U.S. intelligence community has publicly accused Russia of hacks on the Democratic Party organization. And I just find that just incredibly convenient. And what a novel excuse for them to use to, um, you know, throw out there and say, well, look at what we have here. More fake stuff. And look at how Comey played right into this. And note especially with some of the uh, the emails and the evidence that have come out that Infowars.com has, uh, has now published with regards to um, a farm that was visited and a lot of the code words that deal with like child trafficking and the emails that revealed how the Clintons, uh, Hillary Clinton, visited Jeffrey Epstein's Orgy Island at least six times. I mean, this is the kind of people that are probably going to be elected into the office unless something happens. I don't know. And then again, you know, what happens if Trump gets in? I don't know. I don't know. This is the most topsy-turvy, upside-down, crazy election, at least where the light has been shined on the putrid stench 
of corruption and the culture of corruption that has plagued our government now for a very long time. And I hope and pray that people finally get pissed enough to actually do something about this. And participating in a broken system really is not a good way to go with regards to this because I got to tell you, <clears throat> you may vote one way or the other, but at the end of the day, with the revelations of Bev Harris and blackboxvoting.org, that vote may not be counted the way that you cast it, even if it shows up on the screen. They've got a lot of votes out there that have said uh, that, you know, people press it, Donald Trump flips to Hillary Clinton. We know that. But this fraction magic stuff is unbelievable. And how do you overcome such massive corruption so close to the election? You know, you also have um, ISIS that has conveniently come out to say, oh, we need to attack on election day. Could we see something on election day? I don't know. I don't know. But I certainly wouldn't put it past them. That's for doggone sure. In other news, according to the local.de over in Germany, Zuckerberg is being investigated for a hate crime. Isn't that interesting? COO Sheryl Sandberg, this according to uh, the local. European policy director Richard Allen and Eva Marie uh, Kirschscheiper, who heads the company's Berlin office, are also under investigation, according to Spiegel. Prosecutors confirmed the investigation to the FAZ as well. Uh, investigators must prove whether there's enough evidence of criminal offense and whether it falls under the Munich prosecutor, prosecutor's jurisdiction. The probe was initiated after a Bavarian lawyer reported the company to police accusing its management of allowing racism, Holocaust denial, and violent threats to remain on the site without consequence. Facebook is legally bound in Germany to delete all known content which can be considered incitement of hatred. So over in Germany, you have much more censorship than you do over here. Isn't that great as we, you know, with the TPP and all these other um, free trade agreements that are put in place, you have reciprocating rules. And a lot of these uh, rules pertaining to censorship, if they're allowed to pass, would come to fruition here in the United States, which is something you don't want. You know, that's something that is going to be devastating to transparency and to accountability if those control mechanisms are put into place. Final story of the night, David Stockman warns both Trump and Clinton could lead to a 25% sell-off of the market. That's pretty interesting, too. Uh, he was on a, a CNBC interview, and um, according to him, and he's uh, widely, by the way, widely credited as the father of Reaganomics, delivered an alarming message to investors saying, sell everything. He says the markets are hideously inflated. He warned this on uh, CNBC's Fast Money this week. And uh, former director of the Office of Management and Budget under Ronald Reagan urged investors to dump stock and bonds ahead of the dangers that both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton pose to the markets if either is elected president. This is David Stockman. He says, if you don't sell before the election, certainly do it afterwards. Government is going to be totally paralyzed regardless of who wins. He said there could be a 25% drawdown on markets. Stockman posits under a Clinton administration, official investigations and new hacked email disclosures from WikiLeaks will be nonstop. Further, he's, he reasoned that the House will become a killing field for anything Clinton is trying to do. Ultimately, Stockman said the Democrat would enter the Oval Office bruised, bloodied, and all but lacking in legitimacy. And for six months, he says, quote, or even longer, there will be acrimony, there will be brinkmanship, and there will be paralysis. There will be swar a, swarm in, uh, a swarm of House committees doing investigations from all those WikiLeaks. Therefore, there will be no baton handed off from the Fed to fiscal policy 
as we slide into recession. Stockman, who spent 20 years on Wall Street with Solomon Brothers and Blackstone and served as a congressman for Michigan, said the IRS is the government agency that is the clearest indicator that a storm is brewing over financial markets. He said, quote, the IRS said that last year revenue was up 1%, and in the last quarter it was down 4%. And in the five months since May, payroll withholding was barely keeping up with wage inflations. That means the working hours aren't happening. So from here, Stockman reasoned that with the paralysis of Congress and soon to expire debt ceiling, a powerless central bank and a market that's been, in, that's been flat for 700 days, that's the pieces that are in place for a crisis. And he says, we're in the same place today as we were in December of 2014. That massive, there's massive risk. So what's the possible reward? And he's right. So um, it's very interesting that David Stockman, father of Reaganomics, has washed his hands of everything in his portfolio except cash and gold. Amazing that people in the know are even dumping stocks and doing these things now. Um, and it might be good food for thought. I don't know. It's, uh, it's important to follow all of these trends and make the best decisions possible for yourself and your family. So with that said, that is today's daily news update by the daily sheeple.com. Check us out. Subscribe to this YouTube channel today. Subscribe to the daily newsletter. And I will see you all tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs>